Hey, welcome back to the shop. Um, you might remember when I took this rotary table apart and showed you the internals of it. Since then I used it quite a lot and I still like it very much but I found one thing that really annoys me. When you want to set it up that way on your machine's table um, you have to of course to indicate or align it with the travel of your machine and um, you can run a dial indicator across the face of the, uh, the faceplate or you can indicate the part that you have clamped directly or yeah that's it or you can indicate the back side of it which is ground surface ground but what I prefer to do is I like to use the front edge of the of the base to indicate it or align it when I do rough work just with a square. The problem is the surface is painted and it's not machined um, to be aligned with the back side of the of the rotary table. So uh, I was thinking this might be a, a short, small, interesting project where we can improve this rotary table quite a lot. So we're going to set the rotary table up flat on the table. For that matter I'm removing the hand crank. I already loosened up the screw and pulling off the hand wheel. It's just push on there. And now we can, yeah, <laughs> what can we do? Um, yeah, we can clamp it like this on the machine's table. I just was uh, checking for if I have enough travel on the machine to, to get the whole surface in one cut. And as we have a surface grinder now in the shop, after milling we will grind the surface. So first grinding job for first proper grinding job on my new surface grinder. I will do a separate video on the surface grinder of course because this will or might be interesting for some people. Uh, but back to the task at hand, we'll clamp this up. And we don't have to crank down on the on the hold downs because we're really just skimming off a few tenths of a millimeter. And I'm just using a 40 millimeter shell end mill for this job. Okay, and the part is clamped on an angle on the table, so I have to somewhat step it out or manually interpolate the um, diagonal, but it doesn't matter. Okay, that's it. Now we have the surface cleaned up. Okay, this is the surface grinder, a French made LIP 550 uh, manual surface grinder where you have to do the um, 
table movement by hand, no hydraulics. Uh, it can grind a surface of 200 by 100 millimeters and uh, I already set the table up here, the rotary table up on a magnetic chuck, permanent magnetic chuck and um, we can go and grind this edge of the casting using an 80 grit um, aluminum oxide wheel. I wish I had a, a wheel that's a bit more coarse but that's all I have right now, so it has to work and it will work. I also ground the magnetic chuck with this. Um, but we have to protect the remaining parts of the rotary table from grinding dust. And we can use good old serum wrap for that. Hope nothing catches fire. dress the wheel. I did this before uh, I set up the rotary table because I didn't, um, I didn't want the, the grit from the dress be all over the place. I used a small table mounted diamond. It's just a block of steel ground all over, square, with an 8mm hole to set a, a quarter carat um, diamond, single, single uh, point diamond. Check it on your uh, magnetic chuck on the grinder. Bring up your grinding wheel, hold up your shop wax so you don't get the aluminum oxide grit all over the shop and dress the wheel. Give it a nice coarse dress and you're good to go. Remove this. There are also overhead dresses which are mounted to the wheel head of the grinder but um, this grinder has none and these are more precise. But the overheads dressers are very convenient and very fast. Our big young HF 50 grinders at work all have an overhead uh, dresser. But if high precision is asked, our grinder hands use a table mounted diamond. So we wrapped up the rotary table so we don't get any dirt in there. Oh yeah, this is a, a nightmare for the safety guys. Saran wrap and paper all over. And I always do the idiot check with a magnetic chuck. Just take it apart and give it a shake. Okay, now we can proceed on with our grinding. Let's bring down the wheel. And yes, this machine stands on a mobile base, so it's um, shaky. Okay, we're almost touching. Oh, and I have a rag wrapped around up here to protect the vertical columns from grinding dust. Uh, normally they are rubber bellows, but they were ripped up and uh, I need to order them up first. Until then I have the rag up here. And I have also a rag over here to catch the sparks from grinding or the and some of the dust. So it doesn't bounce back from the sheet metal. And um, safety advice when you do this, take when you're finished, take the rag and wet it down with water in your sink or throw it outside in the garden. Otherwise, um, this is a, a very high potential for a fire because the rag may be oily with the sparks. You get the picture. Not very cool. So, let's go and do some grinding. Okay, let's touch off.
Okay, we've got contact in front and back. Let's dial in two hundredths of a millimeter. And what I found works very well on a dry grinder is um, a glass cleaner or a Windex or um, that stuff. I don't want to uh, fog up the shop with WD-40. Let's dial in another two hundredths of a millimeter. Give it another spray of glass cleaner. the foam. Okay, I think we need one last pass to clean the surfaces up. So we go down another hundreds of a millimeter. And cast iron really grinds very nice. Let's give it a spring pass. go that that cleaned up quite nice now we can take it off the magnet go over to surface plate and see if we messed it up okay I cleaned everything up and I moved it over to a granite surface plate otherwise known as tombstone um, and first I'm checking if the faceplate is parallel to the bottom, which um, should be. It's parallel when I rotate it, like this, and it's also parallel when I move the surface gauge around. I don't get, yeah, about a hundredth of a millimeter uh, difference. Yeah, that, that's the most difference I get, one hundredths of a millimeter. And when we, and what we want is we want this surface, the rear surface, and my reference surface to align it, or my aligning surface, to be parallel to each other. And let's check if we achieve this. And we go over. Yeah, we're losing about half a division, that's uh, five thousandths of a millimeter. Uh, yeah, not really. It's, it's better than the accuracy of the style test indicator. Just for fun, we can break up the two thousandths of a millimeter indicator. This is a bit more sensitive, and we start. Zero. Yeah, and we we 
drop two thousandths of a millimeter from here to here. So we have zero and we have uh, minus two thousandth. That's perfectly, <laughs> that's perfectly fine. I would be happy with one hundredth of a millimeter from side to side because it's for the milling machine, not for a grinder. So, looks good. Okay, now we're back on the milling machine and I can show you why I did this. I have a, a machinist square that I can set up against the edge of the T slot and I can bring up the rotary table with the machined surface against the square and rough align the table within seconds. Then I can remove the square, set up my strap clamps and then I can run the indicator from side to side to dial it in perfectly. Um, this is one even surface that's way easier and way better to indicate than the uh, face plate of the rotary table which is um, which has grooves and the T-slot and sender bore and all kinds of interruptions where the, the indicator will jump. So that's that's a nice small improvement on the rotary table. Maybe it's helpful for you. Thank you all for watching and see you next time.